Today we're joined by Eli of Eli Ball Made in Africa, where we're going to talk about the fashion trends for 2020. Eli, thank you for joining us on Living Your Best Life. Thank you, Maria. How are you? Good, thanks. And you? Good. Good. So let's firstly, before we get into the fashion trends, let's talk about your brand itself. Eli Ball Made in Africa is a lifestyle brand more than a clothing brand, or should say it's a fashion lifestyle brand. We do household textiles, accessories, ladies wear, men's wear, and kiddies wear. We got an online store. We also do custom made clothing. This year, we are trying to get a more online presence and going to market online obviously on social media, um, yeah, that's it. As a designer, where do you get your fashion inspiration from? Fashion inspiration comes from obviously the trends, Europe, um, but I think as a South African designer, we're starting to find our own fashion or our own niche or create our own niche. So that's where it is. And then unfortunately, fabrics are not easily available in South Africa. So we first source fabrics and then we design collections around the fabrics. So you are a designer that has had the opportunity to travel quite extensively to promote your brand. Um, just tell me a little bit about some of the things that you have done overseas to promote local. Well, the first trip was, or the first fashion related trip was to Italy where we studied for two months that was sponsored by the city. And then we studied more basically fashion branding because as designers, we need to know how to brand our, our product. Um, so that was a two months course in Italy. And then after that, I think I showed in Paris. And then last year I took part in a trade fair in London. And hopefully this year, August, I'm going back to London, but for a fashion show, which is actually promoting Africa. And then I go off to Thailand in November, I think it is, to do um, silk fairs trade something with the Thai government and other designers. Yeah. All right, so let's now talk about the fashion trends for 2020. Specifically, let's move towards the women first because women like to be first. Well, as a classic designer, I hardly follow trends, but then we have to have some direction. Um, I think what we need to do as, as South Africans or South African designers is actually create ethnic fabrics as more trend forward garments or more trend forward fashion. I also think that houndstooth is coming in. Well, it's been in from last year. Um, there's also bold checks. Uh, for evening wear, there's ombre, ombre sequins, which is amazing. And also feathers and tassels. Now, as my clients would know, or my followers, that I love feathers. Um, so that's a good thing. But I think for a client or a, a person that doesn't want to wear too much feathers, they can have it on their bag, their shoe, or their choker. Um, easy fitting clothing and I think we also as South African designers need to incorporate the ethnic prints somewhere in the garment or in the look which between you and I, I think that will actually form a trend or create a trend and then the world could follow us thereafter. What about colours for each season? Colours, okay, the houndstooth obviously is black and white, the bold checks, you're also going to mix monochromes, the beiges and the browns, the cream, the white, add a bit of grey. There's a lot of neon going around, which personally speaking, I don't care for it. Um, a lot of red, I noticed, and just neutral tones, because obviously it's South Africa and we need to be Africa. And for men? For men, what I researched a couple of months ago was bold red, which is a bit scary. Checks, obviously, um, the hound's tooth. The bold red, I would actually create a suit for a guy, but I would do different tones of red, like the jacket would be one tone, the pants would be another tone, the shirt, and then the tie would be most probably a sheen tie, just to add a pop of contrast. Um, tartan checks, um, hound's tooth. Mixing checks with check is in, but they all must be in the same color palette, obviously, unless you want to be out there and throw a pop of check in it. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So let's talk about mixing or balancing style and trends. Okay, trends will always be there. They, they set the pathway for fashion. But I think as an individual, you need to know or go to a designer or a stylist and ask them like what would suit you. For example, if you're a plus size client and you want to use a bold big check on a long oversized coat that wouldn't work maybe do it in a clutch bag or a shoe or a belt or even a scarf um, so really don't follow the trends to the t you should be able to identify what suits your style your body shape and also your personality and it also depends where you're going to 
Another thing I noticed where they're using check fabrics or check prints in evening wear and polka dots. So obviously, if you're a plus size girl, polka dots really won't look nice if it's like a big garment or a long flowing evening dress. So there you've got to learn how to accentuate the trends into your look. Okay. What is the one thing that we have to have this year? One thing that we have to have this year? Scarves and accessories. Always. I always say that. Because you can have a trans... For a female now, you can have a transitional dress where you could wear it in the day with a coat or a short coat and then in the evening, but now you want to go out and look sexy, you throw a scarf, or you take the jacket off, you throw a scarf on, you put on your nice sexy sandals or your sexy heels, and that's amazing. But you don't have to go home and change it. As a designer, trying to inspire the younger designers, what word of advice can you give them? Study designing, but also learn how to run the fashion business. Because fashion is a business, unfortunately, uh, unless you have amazing investors, but you have to know that, okay, this is the product I'm designing, this is the, the, the lines I want to launch, can they be sold, where are they going to be sold? Also, I think you need to identify your market. And the good thing about South Africa is that our market is still young. The fashion industry, actually the whole country is still young. We can create trends for our fellow South African client and say, okay, this is what we predict, not necessarily following depart stores or fashion houses abroad. So, and also the, the, the famous old saying, don't give up, keep on pushing on, keep on pushing on. You know, and eventually one would make it, hopefully. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs> thank you very much, Miria.